In this video, we are going to see polar plot of a simple pole. And the equation in terms of S variable for a simple pole in time constant form can be written like this 1 over 1 plus st. Usually, the polar plot is plotted by substituting s equals j omega. It means we are moving in the imaginary axis and we change omega from 0 to infinity and plot the resultant magnitude of this plot, okay, of this function and the angle of this in a complex plane. Okay. Now, if you substitute s with j omega, we get a complex function, okay, which is 1 over 1 plus j omega t. And if you write it in a complex form, that is real value plus j times imaginary value, in order to write that, we need to multiply and divide with conjugate values of this, okay, which is 1 minus j omega t over 1 minus j omega t. Here it is plus, sorry. And we can write this as 1 over 1 plus omega square t square minus j times omega over 1 plus omega square t square. Okay, and it can also be written in terms of magnitude and phase, which is also known as polar form of representation. If you take this, it will be 1 plus omega square t square, okay, and the phase angle will be tan inverse of minus tan inverse of as it is pole omega t. Okay, and if you take omega values changing from 0 to infinity. <coughs> And if you take values of magnitude m, m is this, okay, and phase angle phi is minus tan inverse of omega t. m will be 1, okay, and phi will be 0. And if you take omega equals 1 by t, we get magnitude of 1 by square root of 2 and phi minus 45 degrees. And as omega tends to infinity, magnitude tends to 0 and phi tends to minus 90 degrees. If you look at these values of phi, they're going to change in between 0 to minus 90 degrees as omega changes from 0 to infinity. And this particular plot of magnitude and phase with respect to in a complex plane is going to be in the fourth quadrant, that is, in the area where the angle is in between 270 and 360, which is nothing but minus 90 to 0. Okay. If we take a complex plane, okay, if we take a complex plane, U and IV, fine, and uh, when omega equals to 0, the value of this plot is, when omega equals 0, the value of this phasor is 1, okay, and the phasor can be represented like this, okay, it is magnitude 1 with the angle 0, and now if you take values of m at omega equals 1 by t, the value of m is 1 by square root 2, okay, and if you look at this, the angle is minus 45 degrees, and real value here, the imaginary value and the real value will be exactly same. Okay, this value and this value, this is real value, will be same. And if you plot for different values of omega, okay, and take the magnitude and phase, we get a plot something, okay, it will be like this, which is uh, in a semicircle form. And we denote directions to this plot in the way as omega is changed from 0 to infinity. At this point, omega equals 1 by t. Okay, And this imaginary value will be 1 by 2 and the real value will be 1 by 2. And this magnitude of the phasor okay, will be 1 by square root of 2. And the angle will be minus 45 degrees. Okay, we can prove these values. Okay, the imaginary value at which the imaginary values maximum value will be, and it will be at omega equals 1 by t. 
and uh, we can see the angle is 45 degrees at that point. If you draw it by zooming in, I mean having a bigger plot, this point is when omega equals to 0 and the magnitude of this is 1 okay and as omega this point is at as omega tends to infinity and the arrow marks will be in this direction which indicates omega changing from 0 to infinity and at omega equals 1 by t the magnitude of the plot will be 1 by square root 2 and this is the phasor okay whose magnitude is 1 by square root 2 and the angle is minus 45 degrees and the imaginary value will be minus half and the real value will be half okay this is how the polar plot for a simple pole looks like